Okay, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the MOSFETs on the controller board on the M365 Pro. And uh, where it is, is they get pretty hot. So we're going to take a look at those and see if we can figure out what's going on with them and whether we can uh, cool them down using some thermal pads or some thermal paste. We'll take a, I'll take a look once I get in there and see what I think might be best for the situation. Uh, but uh, one of the things to work on your scooter is you're going to have to turn it upside down. When that works for getting <laughs> access to the scooter here. Alright, I'm down to the last screw so I thought I'd turn it back on. So you guys get to see first crack at the inside of this thing. Just like I get to. Okay, so there's that bottom plate. You can see there's looks like a little bit of vibration dampeners. Could be better, but that's what we've got. And now let's go for the money shot. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is disconnect this guy. Our goal is going to be getting at this little box down here. So I just removed, this is the main battery socket. We also have these three on the side. It looks like they have little clips. So just push down and pull up. Be gentle with it. You can't mess these up because they're all different sizes. So that is the one good thing. We also have this little sticker on here. We'll pull that back. Now voided our warranty. If you ever thought you had one from Gearbest or Banggood, which, hey, I've never tried. So now we're gonna take these cords out. And get out the little box. It's also these uh, drive wires here. And looks like those pull straight up. Leave the leave the rubber on it. Leave that rubber on the top of it so you can actually pinch it. And pull up. Okay. That works. And we got yellow, brown, and then blue. Yeah, those are in there tight. I heard that these crimps weren't done very well, but they seem to be pretty well done on this this one. So we'll keep those off to the sides, and it looks like we've got three screws that we're going to have to remove to access this thing. And on the bottom, two more. This one's kind of sideways and underneath the charge controller. So I'm going to be extra careful with this guy. And the third one down here. There we go. We've got the unit out and you can see underneath here that's not the best uh, thermal grease job in the world down there. But that's why we're in here. So let's get a better shot of this controller. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, 
keep in mind that you've got a big, there's a big capacitor in here, so there is risk of shock. So just be careful to not touch anything that you shouldn't touch. And just open up these clips. Okay, so what we're looking at here is on this particular unit, these are the MOSFETs right here. And it does have some, uh, it's like a little isolator thermal strip on here. So yeah, we've got this little isolator pad in here and it actually looks uh, like they did a decent job. Um, in fact, these MOSFET tops are, are uh, actually seem to be aligned quite well and touching the metal pretty closely. So that's pretty nice. And it even looks like the case pushes down on this pad to push them up against the metal. So, okay, so at this point, uh, just looking at this and using my best judgment, uh, what I'm seeing is these tips uh, really seem to line up quite well along the top there, especially when you get the pressure of the case pushing that down. Um, and also I don't, I personally don't want to remove this uh, yellow, basically this is uh, so you don't get electricity going back and forth, you know, so it's it's an insulator. Um, but this is thermal tape. It, it actually passes um, thermal energy through it fairly well. I mean, you'd be better off with bare metal, but I'd rather not risk it. And I think that using a little bit of thermal grease is going to be better on top of this, if then if I removed that yellow tape and put a pad down, I think the pad would get in the way. So I'm actually going to add some thermal grease to the back of these MOSFETs. I think that's really going to be the best, uh, best case scenario for this because mine do line up really well. Um, and it does have this pressure tape along the top, or padding I guess that's gonna push that down into it. So really I think with some thermal grease um, that obviously you want to use thermal grease that is non-conductive. I'll be using some Noctua NTH1. And some people have been concerned about there being some flow um, but really this, this stuff is is non-conductive and It's gonna be fine If We just kind of spread this I'm gonna try to get it pretty even We just want a little bit of grease material there so when this gets pushed down onto the metal there it conducts the electricity a little bit better sorry it can conducts the heat a little bit better we don't want it to conduct electricity um, so that's that's literally all I'm personally going to do is that little bit on there because I don't I really don't think it needs more than that. So that may not even help very much, but we've, <laughs> we've got it locked down now. We know that, that we've got a little bit better heat transfer going on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this clip back on and package it back up.
and that's now pushed down on there. I can see that there's, I mean, there's pressure up against those MOSFETs and we've got thermal grease on the back of there, which should aid in transferring some of that heat into the casing. And uh, let's go ahead and check out the thermal grease situation in here. You can see that that was not spread very evenly. on the back of the case. Even though that's flat, you may be looking at that Anna and thinking, oh, well, yeah, they just, that's the parts that touches it. But no, that's a big flat area that is not uh, covered in grease. So I'm actually just gonna spread some additional grease over this. And I've heard some people be like, whoa, that's gonna get all in your battery and things like that. It's really not, it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, I'm not worried about it at all. Um, we may want to spread some onto here. Yes, I know the oil in my fingers is bad for this, but just relax. Okay, so the rest should spread pretty well on its own. So that all looks really good. Uh, at least this pro version looks like the, it was, it actually looks built quite well. Um, but before I drop that on there, I'm gonna take a look at these connectors and see what I think. Because some people have said they didn't feel like these were crimped down very well. But judging by how hard it was to pull those out, um, I think they're pretty good. That said, I'm gonna I'm gonna tension them down just slightly, so when they go back over it, it's a good tight fit. Yes, I should be using a correct crimp tool for this, but. I'm just adjusting them slightly. So those should go on very snugly now. And the, you know, the, they look connected really tightly and I'm not concerned about it. I've heard other people have theirs not be on there very well, but this, this actually seems pretty well built. At least this pro, pro version. So now I'm gonna drop this back into place. So I'm not snugging these all the way initially. I'm just uh, getting them in there a little bit to hold them in place. And then I'll tighten them all down at the same time at the end. Those are in, and now it's just a matter of plugging uh, the scooter back in right there, and you are done. But uh, so, anyways, that's how you can remove your controller card and check your MOSFETs to make sure that they're good and tight, and add some thermal grease if needed to both the chassis tray the chassis tray and the MOSFETs themselves. Now, if you wanted to, you could have used some thermal interface material here. These thermal pads 
are electrically non-conductive, you'd want to look for non-conductive material. But looking at the way that this is put together, I don't recommend the pad unless you see that your MOSFETs are kind of not flat or not joined and they're kind of off the top of it. But this thing looks really nice and it's got kind of that puffy material on the top that's actually the tray is pushing the MOSFETs into the metal. And I think that should really help uh, with heat transfer. So I actually didn't use the thermal pads. I just used extra thermal grease on both the back of the tray and on the top of the MOSFET. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, hope this video wasn't too long and it can help you see how to disassemble the scooter's internals. Bye.